curves can be a really good way of solving inequalities in equations. So let's just recap our curve sketching menu, you know, some of the things we look at to put curves together. Now I'm, I'm talking about these algebraic ones there where we can write it all as one complete fraction. So that's probably the first idea. Because then we know we can find that y-intercept by substituting in x equals zero. We can then find the x-intercept because we've made it all one fraction. Then it must be the top of the fraction that equals zero. So numerator equals zero. Uh, we can then do a polynomial division. And when we do our polynomial division, we'll end up with something like this. We'll get the quotient plus the remainder over the divisor. And then when it's in that form, that gives us a lot of information as well. So the divisor, AX, well, we know the bottom of the fraction can't equal zero. So that tells us vertical asymptotes, point discontinuities, that sort of thing. The quotient ends up being the horizontal or the oblique asymptote, depending on what it happens to be. And if you want to find out whether it's possible for the curve to cut that asymptote, then we have a look at the remainder. And if the remainder can equal zero, then it's possible for the curve to cut the asymptote at that particular x value. The other idea that can be useful is symmetry. So looking out for odd and even functions. The other symmetry you might not pick up on, but keep an eye out for it, is that y equals x. So if you notice that when you swap the x and the y's around, you get exactly the same function, then you know it's going to be symmetric in y equals x. And the classic one, of course, is our standard hyperbola, I guess. y equals 1 on x. If you swap the x and the y's around, x equals 1 on y, you can rearrange that and you get exactly the same function. Hence, it's symmetric in y equals x. All right, let's talk a bit more about these asymptotes. So the vertical ones. So that's points that do not exist in the domain and curves cannot touch or cross a vertical asymptote. As opposed to the horizontal and oblique ones, they can cut those ones. That's basically saying the curve converges to that. It approaches it out at infinity. So it's basically telling you what happens out at the extremity. Now, there are three limits that can be useful. And if you think about it, again, it's just our basic hyperbola. And if we're talking out of the extremities, we know that it approaches zero out of plus or minus infinity. Our exponentials. So e to the power of minus x, our backwards exponential. Again, we know out at positive infinity, that would approach zero. And the regular exponential, it's the other way around, out at negative infinity, that will approach zero. So if I had to draw this curve, x squared plus x on 1 minus x squared, whatever that happens to be, if I wanted to investigate what happens out at infinity, the long way of doing it, of course, is dividing by the highest power, so x squared in this case. And we end up with 1 plus 0 on 0 minus 1, which is negative 1. The quick way, you'll remember, is to just look at the highest power, the coefficients. So I've got x squared on the top, so 1's on the top, minus x squared on the bottom, minus 1's on the bottom, 1 on minus 1 is minus 1. Okay e to the power of x plus e to the power of minus x over 2e to the power of x. So we've got the limit as approaches infinity, but one of them's power of negative x, one's the power of positive x. So we first of all rewrite this so all the powers are negative. So I'm going to divide everything by e to the power of x. And if I do that, I get 1 plus e to the power of minus 2x on 2. I've now got e to the power of minus 2x, so it's the only exponential in there. But I know that bit will approach zero. Therefore, this particular curve, again, whatever it happens to look like, would approach a half out at infinity. This one here, so because I'm investigating out at negative infinity, I want to be left with e to the power of x, so I want a positive power. So in this case, I'll divide everything by e to the power of negative x. And I'm left with e to the power of 2x plus 1 on 2e to the 2x. The e to the 2x's will approach 0. So I'm going to end up with 1 on 0, which is undefined. Another way of thinking about that. Well, if it's undefined, it's probably going off to in infinity. So let's have a look at this. We're going to draw x cubed minus 9x over x squared minus 4. We've been asked to point out the asymptotes. Also the x, well, not necessarily the x-intercept, but any of the axes. Y intercept, that's when x equals zero. X intercepts, um, that turns out to be x equals zero and x equals plus or minus three. 
So straight away, I know it goes through the origin. Well, because if the x intercept is zero and the y intercept is zero, well, it's... so let's plot those. So there's those three points that we now know. I'll do a polynomial division, and I can now see some things about asymptotes. Vertical asymptote, well, bottom of the fraction can't equal zero. I know I've got a couple of asymptotes at plus or minus two, so we'll dot those in. The oblique asymptote I can see is y equals x. Now, the curve does meet the asymptote because it is possible for that remainder, 5x, to equal zero. So x equals zero will meet the asymptote. I suppose when you draw it in, we can see that that has to happen anyway because that asymptote goes through the origin. We'd already determined that this curve goes through the origin. It's an odd function. Because right, have a look, top of the fraction, x cubed minus 9x would be odd. Bottom of the fraction, x squared minus 4, that's even. Odd divided by even gives you an odd function. Because if they're different types of function, you get an odd function. If they're the same type of function, you would get an even function. So we know we're going to have rotational symmetry. Is there enough info to draw our graph then? There it is. We know we've got to bend towards the asymptotes. I suppose what the things we need to check... See, on the left-hand side, I have no options because I've got to go through that x-intercept. And if I'm bending towards these asymptotes, there's only one thing it can do. Now, as I move, in the middle, though, yeah, I'm going to have to check because this is the way it goes. But, of course, it could have been possible that it reflected and went the other way around. So I might have to just pick a point and test, see is it positive, is it negative. And on the right-hand side, again, on the right-hand side, we've got no options. It has to go through that point, so it must bend towards the asymptotes there. 3B, 3C. Good morning.